Hi everyone and welcome to a new series of videos for developers interested in getting hands-on with MuleSoft's new IDE, AnyPoint Code Builder. My name's Dave Norris and in this video we're going to build the logic for an API specification we created in an earlier episode. I'll be using the desktop IDE in this video, but if you want to use the cloud IDE, know that the features are very similar, so feel free to choose either. Okay, so let's get started in building our logic. When you first open AnyPoint Code Builder, this is your homepage. The first thing we'll do is check to see if we're logged in to AnyPoint platform. The status bar in the bottom right hand corner shows me my current status. To log in, I'll use the command palette, which is Command Shift P on a Mac or Control Shift P on Windows. We'll select the option to log into AnyPoint platform, follow the prompts, enter our details, and click Sign In. To verify we've signed in correctly, the status bar should get updated to show your username. We'll scaffold our build by implementing the specification by opening the command palette again and selecting Implement an API specification. We'll give our project a name and select the API specification we created in the last episode. This is the Hello World API that we can add to our project. We'll then hit the Create Project button. AnyPoint Code Builder is now scaffolding the API based on the specification and creates a new configuration file called Hello World. It also downloads key dependencies so that we can start the build as soon as the project is indexed. The canvas has a flow list that shows all the operations available. We only created a get operation, so only see one option related to our endpoint. Once we select the flow, we can see two simple modules. The first transform module gets the URI parameter name. The second transform module hard codes a simple response. This is the example response we specified in the API specification. Now, we need to implement the logic that takes the URI name and dynamically injects it into the response. So let's take a look at how we do that. Adding the logic to our API is made straightforward because MuleSoft has a functional programming language called DataWeave, specifically designed to make it easy to transform many different media types. In our case, it's super simple. We just need to remove the hard-coded name, Andy, and substitute the URI parameter. So we'll update this data weave. We'll remove the hard-coded name, and we'll concatenate the variable we're setting above. Now the variable being set above is called name. So we can refer to that variable by using the keyword vars dot name and we'll define it as the string data type. So now instead of hard coding Andy, we're gonna retrieve the URI parameter that's been set and substituted it into the message. We're nearly done, but we should probably check that we've implemented this API specification correctly. Since the cloud and desktop IDEs come with the Mule runtime built in, it makes it pretty easy to test it. So let's give it a go. To run our project, and test it out, let's navigate to the Run and Debug button in the Activity bar. Then we'll click the Run and Debug button in the top left-hand corner. This builds our application and uses the built-in Mule runtime to deploy it. MuleSoft downloads all of the dependencies needed to run our application successfully. All we need to do is check that our application builds successfully by checking the terminal panel and you should see the application in a deployed state. Now we can simply use the built-in terminal window in Visual Studio Code to test our API implementation. To do that, we'll use the plus button in the top right-hand corner. Then we'll simply use curl as our HTTP client to call our local host endpoint. In this case, we're using localhost 8081 as our port forward slash API forward slash hello. And the URI parameter we're using in this example is Jane. So when we run this, our API should successfully reply with hello Jane. If we run it again, 
and substitute the name for somebody else, we should see that the message dynamically changes. Congratulations, we've just implemented an API. We used the IDE to jumpstart our development by getting it to scaffold the API implementation. We use some really simple data weave to dynamically inject someone's name into the response before testing it in the same IDE. I've included some resources here you might find useful. At the top, we have links to online documentation that covers the same topics we went through in this video. Underneath, I've got a link to show you how to iteratively scaffold an API. So if you make changes to the design of the API, you can re-scaffold the implementation. As always, for more MuleSoft content, follow us on LinkedIn and check out our Twitch channel. And finally, don't forget to check out other videos in this series for more content on AnyPoint Code Builder.